do you ever get that feeling that you're in a fairy story where they have an incredible task, they have to sift through straw and find gold needles or something? Well, this is a little bit how this feels at the moment because I filtered um, part of what was in the rain bucket. I just want to give it a... I, it's that ye of little faith moment again, I think. I'm too sceptical. But I was um, doing a small amount to see what I'd pick up from uh, a complete bucket of water or a, a two, yeah, three quarters of a bucket of rainwater. So a bit hard to see here. So I'll, I'll take a still photo of what's in here. But um, there's a lot of um, what looks like sort of leaflet or detritus that's blown from the trees around the bucket. It was kept out under quite an empty area, sort of a flat terrace, but um, still picked up bits and pieces. But I'm hoping that somewhere in there are micro meteorites. The tricky part is, and I'm really glad I read it, there's a, a really good site by Robert Beaufort, and he seems to be a bit of a meteorite guru, I think, in the States. Steve Spangler also recommends connecting to him. And um, he said that in urban areas, you're quite likely to pick up contaminants or pollutants from industrial activity around. And I live in sort of on the fringe of the industrial belt. We're quite green on one side and then um, close to industry on the other. And really also close to uh, a railway line, which means that we could probably have... Um, teeny tiny little bits of slag instead. And possibly some of the signs that you'd expect to see for a micrometeorite, you may find them replicated with slag. I'll better double check that, but I think it's that they're magnetic. So what I'll be looking for are things that bear the marks of their fiery entry into the Earth's atmosphere. I think there um, is pitting and um, evidence of burning or melting on the outside. So we shall see. Okay. Um, this is the technique that was recommended by Robert Beaufort on his website and what you do is you need a neodymium magnet, the one of the scary ones that when they crash together they're supposed to squash children's fingers so I'm being very careful I put the other one far away. Um, you put it inside a plastic bag and then what you are supposed to do is draw that over the material that you've got in your filter. I might need to actually roll the filter down a little bit. And then what you're hoping to pick up are the magnetic particles, some of which might be micro meteorites and some of them could just be random things like slag from the railway down the road. And so I'll do that. And then somehow you have to flip the bag up and catch what's inside it. And then the next step is to use one of these babies and um, alcohol apparently to separate them out carefully. But what I want to do is try and basically get what I can catch here into the, I better take that out actually, the Petri dish which is currently sitting on the microscope over here, so I'll just make that a little bit easier to get that flipped in there. And um, not something to do in the, at the night time when you're very old, like me, and you're dotard. So anyway, what I'm going to do is pass the magnet over the particles and see what we can pick up. And then the campers. I'm not sure if we're getting... Oh yeah! Oh, I'm thinking, oh no, there's nothing stinking! Oh, take the magnet back to the shop. No, it's looking good. I'm getting a little bit. Yep. Yeah. Little bit there. But you can't really see anything anyway because it's probably a little bit dark. But we are getting um, a few. But it's interesting actually to see it's not as many as I would maybe have expected. Come on, space dust woman. Rare. Exciting. But yeah, as I pass it over, you do have to do a few sweeps. I hope it's not just sticking because I'm squashing onto that and um, making a fair amount. But yeah, it'll be interesting to find out when you have a look at it exactly how much of this is just um, common or garden muck from down the road and all the industries around the place or actually from, um, from spurs. Okay, so and then apparently the next step is that you pop it out of the bag and remove the magnet and then it should, all the bits and pieces that you need, should be in the bottom of the bag. Yeah, I can see some particles. Well, oh, quite long. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you ate my space dust! Come back! Oh. 
They were delicious. Are you filming? <laughs> right there. I think I can see them in the corner of the bag, but I'm not sure. Oh, it moved off the. That looks like a bug carcass. If they fall out of it. Man, oh man. And wherever they were. Oh no, they're still really trapped in there. Oh, blimey! I'm not sure I grew to the Ziploc bag method because I think I can see some stuff near the. Oh no, teeny tiny. Well, I guess they must be microscopic. They're micro. Me, right, eh? <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to. Should I get those on? I'll go with what I've got there because basically at the moment I'm just curious to see what I'm actually looking at because that would be a bit heartbreaking to sit there and thinking, guess what? You've got a whole bag of slag. <laughs> okay. And nothing that nothing of, of relevance. The only thing is, is that they've spread out over quite a wide area. So I need to kind of Ooh. Oh my god, we've got a bug. We have got a bug. I've definitely not got the right eyes for this anymore. 